My name is Dave McCarthy. I'm head of operations for Xbox, and we're here at E3 talking to you. So let's talk about the new console strategy that you guys have unveiled here at the show. Yeah, well, I mean, as part of a bigger vision that we showed uh, starting on Monday around uh, playing without boundaries on Xbox. And we talked about that across our content lineup, the largest uh, number of games ever coming to Xbox Live and new features like Xbox Play Anywhere. We talked about it with our Xbox Live service and new features that make it a place where everyone can have fun. Uh, and even expanding to cross-network play. You know, we showed uh, support for iOS and Android on Minecraft, as an example. Um, and then that idea of choice around playing without boundaries expanded to our uh, Xbox One family of devices. And of course, we announced Xbox One S uh, here in 2016, available starting in August, uh, and then Project Scorpio in 2017, with uh, six teraflops of GPU and support for true 4K gaming. So let's talk about 4K gaming, uh, starting with the S. What, what do you feel that will, what kind of leap will that be when you look at the industry from the past, SD to HD type leap? Well, I mean, if you want an indication of what's going on in the true 4K space, I think PC is really where you look right now. Uh, you know, on Windows 10, we've shipped Gears of War Ultimate Edition, uh, Forza Apex uh, as examples there. We're learning a lot in that space. Um, and it's great to be able in 2017 to, uh, you know, we're listening to our developers. We're hearing that that six teraflops bar is critical to deliver what gamers are enjoying in the PC space right now. And we anticipate, um, you know, offering that to our, our customers and really unlocking those great experiences that you can only enjoy in the PC space right now. What are, how do you see things evolving when it comes to the amount of time a console now lives out there in the ecosystem? Right. Well, I mean, we expect to, um, you know, and I think our, our gaming audience expects us to make uh, Xbox a brand that's always pushing the boundaries of innovation. And the challenge in the past has been, how do you make those meaningful jumps while not sacrificing compatibility, right? And essentially leaving gamers behind. And we're really committed with this playing without boundaries uh, philosophy to ensure that we don't leave anybody behind. And so the key in designing both Xbox One S for this year and then talking about Project Scorpio and giving our developers a heads up for 2017 um, was making that promise around the games you own today that you buy tomorrow, the accessories that you have, your controller and so on, those are all gonna work across our family of devices. And in a way, you know, the sort of the generational boundary is eliminated that way. Because we're gonna be able to offer that technical innovation when it makes sense. Not just innovation for innovation's sake, but offering that value when gamers tell us it makes sense. We heard it with HDR gaming and 4K video and Blu-ray support for this year on Xbox One, and we're hearing it again with true 4K gaming for Project Scorpio in 2017. Once you have an ecosystem with the S, the Scorpio, and the traditional Xbox One, where does that leave the Xbox One in the overall space? Well, I mean, the philosophy here is all about choice. Right, And so it's not us dictating what machine you need because you have that guarantee of your content and your accessories working across the lineup overall. So there'll obviously be you know different price points that people enter. I think Xbox One S in particular, if you're still on 360, which is a really uh, thriving community for us still to this day, and you've been wondering about you know jumping in, uh, or you haven't been a part of the Xbox family yet, uh, of console devices, the value that we're delivering at 299 starting in August, um, you know, the the Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray support alone, a lot of those players right now are over 299 plus HDR gaming, plus this sleek industrial design that we have, the new Xbox wireless controller on there. You know, these are really value add pieces for people. They're going to choose when they want to do it, but they don't have to worry about being left behind. And let's stick with uh, hardware for a minute and talk a little about the controllers you guys are showing yeah. here. So we've got the uh, we've got the new Xbox One wireless controller right here. Uh, new texture grip on the back, uh, Bluetooth capabilities as well. What's really nice there, again along the themes of playing without boundaries, this is going to work seamlessly across your Windows 10 uh, PC devices as well. So when we have features like Xbox Play Anywhere that allow you at no additional cost to you to be able to take your titles across both console and PC Windows 10, um, and have your shared progress and achievements, just like those games are going to work seamlessly across it and have your entitlements flow, these uh, accessories are going to work over as well. The other thing I wanted to call out 
is Xbox Design Lab. I'm really excited about this idea. You can tell we're big on choice this year. And this is a perfect example of choice where I can get over 8 million combinations of buttons and colors on all parts of the controller, D-pad, triggers, uh, the like. And of course, I love the engraving feature. Here, I can put my gamer tag on it. Now there's no uh, more arguing with the kids which one is dad's controller. When it comes to uh, E3, we're seeing this evolution of trade show, public show. You guys had the Fan Fest. Talk about what role that plays in the overall Xbox. In terms of the the role of E3 for Xbox overall? Well, and the Fan Fest you guys just did across the street the other yeah, day. Well, I'm, it is great for us to be able to touch so many different audiences with what we do here in, in L.A. Our fan base is critical uh, for us. And to be able to do things in person here, I was down with some of the Xbox uh, leadership team on Sunday night, I think it was, or Saturday night at the Microsoft store and saw, you know, our lineup before to get into Fan Fest and just, you know, being able to thank people and see the passion of them overall um, we love talking to the press but we love talking to the fans as well and it's been really energizing to be able to do it and for those who can't be here in LA again leveraging the power of Xbox Live we had our biggest broadcast numbers ever um, across uh, all of our channels um, including uh, the Xbox Live console for the event itself and you know our ability to connect with our fan base and listen to our customers is like, it's at the center of everything we do, right? You see our ongoing commitment to improvement in the PC uh, Windows 10 space and also on console. It's led to new feature announcements like background music, finally, uh, and region unlock. Um, some of our great new Xbox Live features around uh, groups, or sorry, clubs and looking for group uh, and arena, that's all based on fan input on what they want to make Xbox Live uh, a more fun and uh, enjoyable place to play. As you guys introduce new games uh, or new iterations of games like Gears of War 4, for example, can you talk about eSports and what role that plays for Microsoft today? Yeah, I mean, we're really excited about the potential of eSports. Um, you know, uh, Arena is a huge feature for us. Um, it basically uh, allows us to supply developers with the ability to build a tournament structure for people of all uh, capability levels, from professional all the way down to novice. Uh, it's in the Xbox Live uh, XDK already. We're seeing support and uh, Killer Instinct, World of Ta Tanks and Spite uh, as an example. We talked about EA Sports uh, coming along on the journey with us. We're really excited to do that. We think the potential is huge in that space. What have you guys learned from Halo having having still done, worked on the Halo World Championship and having that ongoing? Yeah, I mean it's, you, you, you asked earlier about fan engagement. There's no better engagement than at some of these esports events. The uh, tournament we ran for Halo was incredibly successful. Great engagement on it overall. Um, you know, I think uh, the the shift we might be making here is is the the pro ultimate events at the end of the day are cool and they get all the attention. It's just as cool to be able to do that at the local level, right? And be able to have people of all ability levels come into it. And that's why you see us putting so much emphasis on these new features on Xbox Live so that everyone uh, can enjoy the eSports movement overall. Last year we got to play around with the HoloLens, some cool games. Now the HoloLens uh, Developer Edition shipped with some cool games yeah. on there. What role do you see that playing for video games? Well, I mean, so uh, of course we had HoloLens uh, on stage uh, last year with Minecraft, which I thought was a, a magical moment overall. The team is heads down uh, on their Developer Edition right now. Um, you know, in the Windows 10 PC space, there's a lot of excitement around VR, uh, AR, and MR uh, overall, and we're excited to see what developers do. I would say, you know, we're kind of getting back to that idea of choice here. We want to enable as many developers as we can to do as many creative things on multiple devices and see where they take our audiences. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about cross-platform play? I know you talked about it uh, earlier on, but the world Windows 10 and mobile will play in gaming moving forward. So, I mean, uh, cross-platform play is a really interesting thing. It's happening on a few um, uh, angles for us. You know, we show titles like Forza Horizon 3 and Gears of War 4 uh, during the briefing and enabling um, cross-play there across Windows uh, 10 PC and Xbox One uh, console devices overall. You know, we're, doing, we're enabling that. Um, but we definitely want our development teams to decide where it makes sense, you know, the modes that it makes sense in. Don't force it, you know, just make it a natural choice. And then the other thing that we've um, unlocked recently is cross-network play. Um, and we see that popping up. I mentioned earlier the example of iOS and Android support uh, for Xbox Live on Minecraft. 
bring in a really social experience like Realms together, where you can have up to uh, 10 of your friends in a persistent world. Um, but also things like we've done with Rocket League, right? And allowing uh, cross-network play with Steam. Um, and we're committed uh, to, you know, providing that capability to where our gamers are on networks that allow us to do it. The last thing, you talked about the role of exclusive games available only on Xbox, what that plays uh, in today's ecosystem. Yeah. Well, I mean, our our exclusives are, you know, they're, they're great in a number of respects. They, uh, in many respects, define our brand. Uh, they're definitely a, a thing that our customers and our fans identify with. Um, sometimes they work out kinks in our ecosystem overall. We've learned a lot, for instance, in the Windows 10 PC space um, by launching our full lineup there. You know, games like um, Gears of War Ultimate Edition and, and Forza Apex are, are really um, blazing trails. I'm excited, like, the strength of our lineup over the next 12 months is incredible. In 2016, we've got four AAA exclusives across Xbox One and Windows 10 PC. We've got ReCore, Forza Horizon 3, Gears of War 4, and Dead Rising 4. On top of that, you've got some great ID at Xbox programs coming in 2016. Some of the most anticipated ones out there. Play Dead's Inside is going to show up first on Xbox One at the end of June. We've got an open beta in July for We Happy Few, which I thought was a, a real um, fresh breath of air during, during the briefing. Uh, Cuphead, hugely anticipated title. Actually, an Xbox Play Anywhere title, uh, just like We Happy Few is. And then Below is coming this year as well. And then 2017, we've got five more AAA exclusives coming. We've got um, Scalebound, we've got Halo Wars 2, we've got Crackdown, we've got Sea of Thieves and State of Decay 2. So it's really, you know, it hasn't been a better time to be an Xbox gamer. Whether you're on uh, one of our Xbox One consoles or on Windows 10 PC, we think you're going to have a ton of fun in the coming year.